Hi everyone, Paddy here. Welcome back to another production tip. Today, we're going to look at how you can use your voice as an instrument instead of something that just sings the melody, um, how you can use your voice creatively um, as an instrument within your songs. And we're going to look at a couple of examples throughout the Sunday Song Share Volume 2 project. Uh, the whole EP is out now. Go listen to it on Spotify, etc. First of all, we're looking at the Greater Is He Logic session here. There's two things I want to show you. The first thing is the vocal sample at the beginning of the song um it comes back in a couple of places and you might have wondered what's what's he saying this is the the sound you'll notice that this is a midi and not audio so i haven't sung it in directly into a microphone so what it is basically is it's selections of the first verse and pre-chorus and chorus i think what you can do is uh, in Logic, you can select a portion of audio, in this case, my vocal. Um, this is the main vocal track. Right click it and click convert to new sampler. Set it by transient markers, which is like the, the loud points basically in an audio file. Um, and what this will do is it will map my singing across the keyboard. So now if I play some notes. I leave shadow. So what it means is that I can now play excerpts of my vocal basically. So if you look at this track, that's exactly what this is. I can sort of play it as an instrument. So walk the um, it's kind of fun, right? So all this is, um, if we look at the MIDI, it's just a bunch of random notes, mostly the notes that were like an A which is the key of the song, and then a couple of little melody flourishes. So it sounds like this on its own again. This is super common in pop music. I was just uh, copying a trope, really. Um, and I just added some EQ just to boost the like mids and the highs. And there's a bit of delay on it as well. So yeah, that's a, a cool little thing. Okay, the next thing I want to show you is the synth that's on the bridge. Uh, what was happening here was um, I was at the mix stage and I realized that the uh, the bridge was a bit empty. It felt like it needed a bit of melody in the background. Um, and so I, um, this is the part that I eventually came up with. And I want to talk through the process of how I came to it. So that's kind of an interesting sound. Um, and what that is, um, sometimes when I'm sketching ideas, rather than picking a software synth to pull up and trawling through presets or trying to build my own sound. Um, I'll just use my voice. If I know the kind of sound I'm going for, I can try and achieve that with my voice first of all. And then if that's not working, I can go and find a synth to do it. Um, so I just pulled down this mic and I uh, pulled open the Logic Quick Sampler and just sang a note into it. Um, and this is the note that I sang in. beautiful uh, really distorted at the end lots of breath into the mic not very nice thing um so what i did is i pulled it into uh logic quick sampler this is the file uh you can see that i moved the start point back a bit and it loops um and again what this means is that now i can play my voice across across the keyboard that's the note that i sung but now i can play kind of fun isn't it so um rather it's not just the pure voice recording there's some stuff happening here um i turn the sustain right down there's a bit of glide on the, being controlled by an lfo and there's some pitch modulation as well pull the cutoff back um which kind of just dampens the high frequencies and added some distortion to it as well on the filter um but it means that now rather than uh using a synth sound that maybe someone else is using as well that's my voice um in the synth so um, that's cool. And what I did is I actually doubled that with uh, an octave up thing as well. So um, again, same sample, slightly different selection from the sample that I'm using, a uh, bit more sustain. And there is, um, and uh, same glide settings, same pitch modulation settings, slightly different filter settings. It sounds like this. Um, and it's got slightly different delay settings as well. So combined, they sound like this, which is just a cool synth sound, basically. So there's an example of how you can use your voice as a synth. Let's go to another one in your ways. That's this session we're looking at now. In the chorus, when I was um, writing this, at one point I realized it was a lot of bass, a lot of high end, but there wasn't much like 
it felt like it needed a pad in the middle to sort of glue it together. Um, and so again, I did the exact same trip, pulled up this mic, and just sang a falsetto A into the mic, and it sounded like this. Beautiful. But again, I did the exact same trick, pulled it into the Logic sampler, quick sampler, um, and it just maps it across the keyboard. So immediately, that's me singing the falsetto A, but with some effects and stuff on you can hear the kind of wobble as i go in and out of tune which is quite nice actually um there's some drive there's the cutoffs come down and take the high end off um there's some pitch modulation on there as well and then it's going through this effect rack which is a sound type and it's yeah just some devil luck just to like give it some crunch and distortion um suddenly i had this really interesting vocal pad and this is what it ended up sounded like on the record it had some sidechain compression to make it pump and some ping pong delay which means it pops into both speakers. Cool sound. And I used the exact same thing uh, down here for verse two, um, which is um, just a little melody thing that happens halfway through the second verse. We're going to look at one final example in the song Everlasting to Everlasting, which is the last track on Sunday Song Share Volume 2. This is a session that I actually started in a hotel room in Boston back in 2017, but it's finally out here and finished. Uh, uh, what I want to look at is the vocals in verse 1. Um, you might hear there's like a, like a slightly strange sounding echo in verse 1. Um, this is what that sounds like. This is the work of the Lord our God. And again, this is me just treating that original vocal slightly differently. So um, here we have the original vocal take, which is just bog standard with some compression and EQ and stuff. This is the work of the Lord our God. And what I've done is I've just copied the exact audio file. You can see that's exactly the same there um, onto this second track called Formant Echo. And you can see there's a bunch of processing here. So there's um, EQ, um, just to basically just take out all the low end and all the high end, just have the mids to make it sound a bit weird. Um, there's sibilance, which is a de There's some tuning on it and um, then vocal transformer. And what I've done here is just um, turn down the formant. Formant just changes the, the quality of the voice, like the, the timbre. If, if I play it one of the, you'll notice it sounds like, my voice sounds a bit weird. Lord of God. Lord of God. Sounds like I'm like underwater. Or I'm, it's been played slowly or something like that. So that's what uh, the formant change does. So I've just taking it down, the formant down a little bit. Um, and it just makes it sound like someone else is singing it. Of the Lord of God. Lord of God. And then because I thought it needed one more thing rather than just add a delay plug in. I thought I'd do something slightly different with the final repeat. Um, and it sounds like this on its own. Uh, a couple of things here. Again, um, that's got basically the same processing as the previous track, but different thing. You'll notice it's got vocal transformer, but it's actually not doing anything. The format is changed, but in the logic flex pitch uh, thing. So in here, you can fine tune vocals by turning on flex pitch. And you can also change the formant. So you see all these have the formant shifted down by five, nine, six, which is why it sounds even more like I'm underwater or someone else is singing it. Um, not only that, I've actually edited the notes I'm singing just by dragging these pitches. So, so really just go, oh, the Lord our God. But instead it goes, oh, the Lord our um, and not only have I dragged the pitches to change them, I've then done a slowdown in Logic. Um, in what you can do in Logic is when you, uh, instead of fading out, if you right click your fade, you can make it slow down, which makes it sound like it's uh, like a tape player stopping or you're turning the record player off or something, which is why it does the thing at the end. Fun, right? So there you go. There's different ways you can treat your voice uh, as an instrument, um, vocal chops, sample uh, yourself singing a note and turn it into a synth and uh, mess with the form and, and speed and things of your vocals.